Here we are with another episode of The Clever Dev, and you can see that today we have a material UI table, and I have some scroll bars on there, and we will simply style them using WebKit, and I'll show you why. Sometimes WebKit can be a little bit finicky, a little tricky, at least with the scroll bars it was. Um, I'll go over the syntax of WebKit styling, and sometimes that's pretty straightforward. You can see an example of it over here. Um, that's not for the scroll bars. But anyway, sometimes it's a little more complex. Sometimes they behave more like a selector with an object. So anyway, if you're interested, then stick around and we'll dive into this. All right, here we are with the material UI table. Um, it's got two scroll bars that I've forced to show on here and no styling, uh, no WebKit styling so far. And that's what we're gonna dive into. Um, First, before we dive into the WebKit styling, I actually want to mention how we got those scroll bars to force to uh, require them to be visible. So you can see that I've got this table container, which is a wrapper on the table component. The table is the meat of it. Um, it's where the content is. Um, so typically in CSS, if you want scroll bars to show, then what you need to do is have some kind of wrapping element that has some kind of fixed width or height and then make sure that the wrapped element or the child element, um, the width and height of it are wider or taller than the uh, fixed width and height that you've set on the parent. So in this case, I have five columns that each have 100 pixel width and um, this max content tells the table, I want you to expand to have enough space for those five children. Um, you can see I've got a fixed width of 400 on my table container so that 500 px of the child is going to require a scroll bar on the parent. A uh, similar story going on with the height except um, here I've just got enough rows that uh, the height of the table is more than 200 pixels. The height of the table container is only 200 pixels. I don't actually need this max content on the height the material UI table will in fact respect the fact that you have these rows and it won't try to scrunch them down. The material UI table will try to scrunch your columns down uh, unless you actually tell it not to by some method like max content, for example. So given that, we will dive into the actual WebKit styling here. So WebKit, uh, the styling it looks a lot like a selector if you've used the SX prop or the style prop or um, within Material UI, you're familiar with nested selector syntax. So let's go ahead and I'll kind of set up the basics of it. So with nested selectors, you select some element here and inside you specify what attributes and values that you want. Um, with WebKit, it's not exactly like you're, like it's, a, it's not exactly an element um, but the syntax for all intents and purposes is the same. So here we go. So here I'm telling it, okay, target this property basically. Um, this syntax here looks very much like uh, it, what I would do to target something. You see there's no space, so I'm not saying target some child. Um, I'm just saying target this element, this component. Um, targeting this specific, in this case, WebKit property. So with that said, I'm going to add a width here. Now this line of code, or this little snippet here, that's what took me the vast majority of my time when I was doing the research to create this video. For some reason, you actually need to go in and add that width, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I'm not sure if it's stripping the original styling there on the scroll bars or what's going on but I'll show you here in a moment why that's required. So here first we're going to target the track after setting that width. And I'll set the background color to orange once it reloads. You can do it. There it goes. Let's see if I can get that to reload. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. Or maybe I have a typo somewhere. Let's see. 
dash webkit dash scroll bar that looks good and ampersand webkit scroll bar track that looks good it's being finicky it's probably just being a little slow to reload so I'm just gonna keep on going so the track was trying to target basically the background that the thumb slides along. The thumb is the part that you typically click with your mouse in order to do the scrolling. So once again I'll add background color and here I'll set it to red and I'll give it some rounded edges with border radius. Set that to two. Okay so there we go we've got our thumbs I must just have a oh it's not scroll bar it's scroll bar. Hmm. There we go. So there we go. So you can see now that background of orange. All right, so let us let me show you what happens if I remove that width that I set. It just totally kills the styling of the scroll bar, track, and thumb. Like I said a minute ago, I do not know why that is. Most WebKit styling is not like that. Most of it's pretty straightforward. So I'll show another example. Um, let's pull something. Let's just look at one of these table cells and let's see how helpful doing it wrong there. Let's see, there was some kind of emphasis that I could put on. I'm not going to be able to figure it out straight from there. Let me go over here, delete this before it throws an error. So I showed you a little bit more complex than usual of an example. Let me see if I can just get There we go. Let's do WebKit text emphasis and we'll do triangle. So you can see that right there. Uh, it's just putting these funny little triangles on there. They're kind of interesting. Uh, let me add one of add this here and I'll show you that it's really quite simple most of the time. I don't even need that bracket. It's not really even an object. I'll just put in triangle here. There we go. And I'm even gonna reload it just to make sure that it's not just remembering that I put in that triangle over here. So there you go. You can see how simple it is really to use WebKit most of the time. Um, I haven't bumped into any other examples where it was really finicky like it was with the scroll bar. Um, with that said, then who knows? WebKit has a ton of stuff in it. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this cleared up how to use WebKit with Material UI. Um, it's really just once you know the syntax, you're good to go. So if this was helpful, I would appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel, and I will see you with the next video.